Hello, dragon folk. How are we all doing today? Hopefully everybody is fantastic as always. I'm happy to have you here. So today we're going to go back to our TCG player topics here. Um, we've already got a couple videos out in our little playlist, which you guys can check out up here if I can post a playlist, but that's where we're going to kind of have it be. But uh, we've gone over things like shipping and how to become a level four seller uh and along the lines of becoming a level four seller i wanted to talk about something that is kind of hard to determine as far as um you know what to do on your end as a seller and this is dealing with feedback so first we're going to talk about the good stuff right the good stuff that you're expecting to see as long as you have followed everything to the t and you're actually taking care of this and doing things the correct way and not uh, you know, just kind of willy-nilly packaging stuff with scotch tape and no uh, top loaders or you're not even putting the cards in sleeves, like none of that stuff. You should expect good feedback, right? Cards, in a perfect world, cards will make it to their destination, right? They will, uh, they will arrive in a fast time, and then the person who gets the card uh, very well could leave a review for your store. Um, every person who has an order through your store can put in a review, and uh, the reviews are public. Uh, they are able to be seen by everybody, so it is really important that when people give you good reviews, right, that they're obviously displayed, but when there are bad reviews, just know that those will also be displayed. So if there is something that you are messing up a whole lot of and your feedback is consistently getting lower and lower, you have to figure out how to fix that on a regular basis, whether or not be shipping cards out earlier than you normally do or making sure that your cards are packaged better or sometimes just making sure that your condition of the card is correct. Because like I explained in our previous videos, um, if somebody orders a card that is near mint, right, and they get the card and the card is very scratched up got a lot of dings on it um it's just some 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 stuff is wrong with it right it's obviously not near mint there is uh you know we can kind of get into condition but i'd rather save that for a different video just know that you have to check with tcg players uh condition guide to kind of determine whether or not you're actually going to be sending out the correct product um that you that you are selling right? So if you are selling a near mint card, you need to make sure that according to at least TCG players, uh, you know, standards, the card is near mint. Uh, look over the card. Every time you, even if you know it's near mint, right? Because when you put it into your binder, it was near mint. You should check to see the card before you ship it out. Really before you list it, you should check it again make sure that the card is in fact of the correct condition and then go from there because TCG players condition guidelines do change every now and again. They did just change recently. Uh, not too much was changed, but um, generally it's kind of like if there's like one small thing wrong with it, they can still consider it near mint, but it's got to be like really small and like not even noticeable. So that is, uh, that is a change there. So just keep your eye on condition because when a customer gets a card that's in bad condition, they will, you know, unless they don't care, right? You know, if you're selling a, a magic card to somebody who's never played magic before and they get the card and they're just like, cool, this is the card, right? They don't know about, they don't know about to look for scratches. They don't know what near mint even is. They don't know what lightly played is. They don't know what any of that is. They just know that they got the card that they ordered, right? Then you're not going to see any issue, right? But there are a lot of people out there because this has become such a very important hobby to, um, to a lot of people to go over their cards when they receive them in the mail to check for any damage to see whether or not it's actually a near mint card that they're sending them and so on and so forth. Again, we'll go into condition in a different video. I mainly wanted to touch on feedback during this one. So of course, like I said, those reviews that people can give you will be 
publicly shown on your seller page. So if somebody is to go to your seller page, they can see the reviews that you have gotten for your store. An important thing, right? Now, as far as reviews go, right, you want to make sure that everybody's happy, right? As far as that condition stuff goes and so on and so forth, the end of the day, you have to realize that the customer needs to be happy because you, and I know it's that whole customer is always right kind of concept and it's, it's hard to deal with, um, but you're going to have to make sure that you're doing everything right on your part. Uh, there will be people, and these people will probably try to scam you. Uh, there's a lot of people who what they will do is they will get, they will order a card from you for, you know, maybe like $5, and then they won't get tracking because it's such a low cost uh, unless you put tracking on everything, which is the only way for you to save your butt in a situation like this. Um, they very well could receive the card, say they never received the card or that the card was lost. And then you as the seller have to give that money back to them. Uh, and we'll, we'll, we'll talk about how this, how this works out as far as those things go, but we're going to just deal with bad reviews first, right? Um, bad reviews. Like I said, there's, there's positive reviews, there's neutral reviews, and then there's negative reviews, right? Neutral reviews are not so much like it's a three star kind of deal where it's like, ah, you know, this, uh, or, you know, yeah, right around three stars. It's kind of like, a, ah, you know, they were okay, right? The card wasn't exactly in its best condition, but it did come in time. Uh, neutral reviews don't exactly hurt your channel a whole lot, but they aren't positive. Um, positive reviews are what you want all the time, and you don't want any negative or neutral reviews, but sometimes people will just leave one right? They could have received their card in perfect condition and, and, and it could have shown up on time and people still could leave negative reviews. So it's all just depending on what, you know, who's at the helm of this, right? But for the most part, I see a lot of good reviews on my store. A lot of people are getting their cards in a good, timely manner, but some are not, which is unfortunate. Right. We, we only have the USPS to to deal with, um, you know, once once that package leaves my hands. Right. USPS is the one in charge of it. And it's very, very hard to track anything after after that happens. Right. Especially with something that's in a plain white envelope. Right. That has no tracking. There'd be no way for me to know where that is in the system if it ever got delivered to the house or at all. So. We're going to talk a little bit about how this works, right? So for missing packages, right? We're going to go over missing packages and kind of just touch over some stuff here. Uh, and I'll go over uh, what we're kind of looking at as far as, as this goes. So apologies for the flashbang. Obviously, this is incredibly bright. TCG Player has not adopted a dark mode yet, which is possibly stupid, but this is a thing. So... What do I do if my order slash package is missing? So this has become quite a common thing uh, with the USPS and so on and so forth. It was more common during the Pokemon boom of 2021, but uh, it still seems to be getting at stuff where like things just get lost. Honestly, things just get lost in the mail. There's a lot of work to be done. The post office doesn't really sleep ever. So we're going to kind of go over some of the stuff and, and do this. So we'll read over a little bit here. Domestic orders may take up to 15 business days to arrive, while international orders could take up to 24 to arrive. Business days are considered Monday through Friday and do not include public holidays or weekends in the United States. Yada, yada. That's all pretty straightforward. So for domestic packages with tracking, you can track your package via the order history menu. And then the shipping pay method for your package will be listed on the order and in your shipment confirmation email. I'll kind of go into a little bit, little bit about this uh, just in case, um, you know, people need to know. But on your order page on your seller account, uh, you know, you can check your order. And in that order, you can post a tracking number for something. Uh, you're going to use that tracking number to track the package throughout its journey. So... That is something to think about. You're going to want that's where you're going to find it if you don't like write it down, you know. So normally this is how this works. 
Um, there's a missing package, right? The status is not changing. It's delayed or undeliverable. It's been more than 15 business days and the package does not have a shipping status update has been delayed in transit or is undeliverable. The customer can contact the seller immediately as they will need to open a case with their shipping provider. The faster the seller knows about the delivery issue, the better. The seller will then be able to work directly with the shipping company they utilized to track down the location of the missing package. If the seller does not reply to you within 48 hours, please contact TCG Player Customer Service. And then, of course, right, it may take a few days for the seller to report back. So just kind of keep your eye on that kind of stuff. If it's not located or delivered successfully to your address, seller should offer a full refund for the missing parcel with the understanding that it is the package that if the package is successfully delivered to you at a future date, you will mark the order as return to sender and place it back in your mailbox. It would if you would like to keep the package, you can contact the seller and TCG player customer service so we can organize repayment for your order. This is a huge problem right here as far as this goes. Uh, missing stuff tends to be an issue, and the best thing you can do as a seller is just be at the mercy of the customer. Um and in a situation like this, right, if it's not located, you can't find it anywhere, it is on you to do a full refund and just assume that the player will either give the order back or will, uh, or will, will, you know, send it back or they'll, will figure something out in which they can send me the money for it, right? Or send, send the seller money for it. So a missing package being marked as delivered right? Verify the shipping address. If the address is correct, look for a notice of attempted delivery. Look around the delivery location for your package and ask any family members or housemates if it's possible they received a package. If you're comfortable, reach out to your neighbors to see if the package was delivered accidentally to their address. It may also be helpful to contact your local post office responsible for the delivery to see if they're holding the parcel for any reason or if they have been reported delivery delays in your area. Please wait 36 hours after the parcel is marked as delivered. Sometimes packages may say delivered up to 36 hours prior to arrival. Messages Message the seller right away as they may need to open a case with the shipping provider. The faster the seller knows about the delivery issue, the better. If the seller does not reply to you within 48 hours, please contact TCU Player Customer Service. And then if it's not located and delivered successfully to your address... Seller should offer you a full refund for the missing package, right? Same deal as an understanding. So no matter what, if this is lost and you have tracking on it, and for some reason they just don't have it, right? Whether or not they're lying about it or not, they, you get a full refund. You have to give them a full refund, right? It is on us to give the full refund. This stuff happens a lot. A lot of times what you can do is you can, uh, I'm not too sure on this exact method, but you can always ban somebody from buying from you um, I'm not sure. Usually that's the case on eBay. I don't know if that's the case on TCG player. Um, I haven't looked too much into that, but for domestic track packages without tracking, this is where the other thing is, right? Without tracking, you essentially just have to assume it's lost. You, there's no way for you to find it. You should offer a full refund, right? And the same deal goes for international stuff. You have to look over absolutely everything, but at the end of the day, it's the same it is the same answer every time. The seller should offer you a full refund for the missing parcel with the understanding that if the package is successfully delivered to you at a future date, you'll mark the order as return to sender. So that's pretty much the biggest deal. Uh, you have a situation in which your, your package has not arrived to them. You've talked to USPS or however you sent it out, and none of these have answers for you, right? None of them have answers for you. None of that's the case. So if that's the case, then you can't, there's nothing you can do, right? If you've done everything in your power to get this package to where it's supposed to be, and it's just gone lost forever, you need to give a full refund no matter the cost, right? Whether it be an entire box and it's like $100 something, or it's some singles that are like $20, $30, right? You have to do a full refund. And it's hard, right? It's hard 
to, to to think that you're at fault for something like that. And I think that's probably something that a lot of people are going to kind of retaliate with. You're going to see uh, sometimes when you when you tell a seller that they are uh, that that your package is missing and that you need it, uh, and it's been well over a month and you still haven't gotten it. Sometimes it's late. Sometimes the deliveries are just really late and they just don't show up. Um, sometimes they really do just not show up at all. But sometimes you'll have sellers try to like fight you back on that. I don't personally. I try to get as much information out of everybody as possible before going any further into this. But this is a big, um, a big issue when it comes to things because you you can't just expect everything is going to go fine, right? In a perfect world, like I said, you're going to see a lot of errors happen on USPS's part. Um, another thing you are also going to do is you're going to run into those people that I say talk about condition, right? They're going to get their thing and it's going to be not the condition in which they got it, right? Whether or not it be damaged or it just not is it's just not the same condition or it's not the right card, right? Maybe you sent the wrong card on accident. Stuff happens, right? In a situation like that, you have the option to have them return the card for a full refund or take a partial refund and then keep the card. So that's all that's all the the only choice you have. So you can partially refund. Um, I think that's a, a good deal that they do have the partial refund on there because let's say somebody orders a near mint version of a card and that goes for ten dollars, right? But then they get it and it's the moderately played version which goes for seven dollars. You can give if they still need the card for play, you can give them a three dollar uh, partial refund to for the difference of everything, and then uh, they can you know they they can keep the card. And then it's like they just bought a moderately played version. So these are all things to keep in mind. Uh, and this stuff does happen, not not frequently, but it is something to keep tabs on. Uh, most of my issues personally with my own store come from USPS losing packages or something being lost in the mail. I had I had a, a package of cards almost like almost like thirty dollars worth of singles being sent out and tracked to a location. Um, and after a month, there was no update on whether or not it even left the post office. So I was like, excuse me, I don't understand. Why isn't this here, right? Why wouldn't this be here? Um, a lot of times, people who just sort mail and do mail things, they, they don't scan that stuff in. Um, scanning it in is an important thing to make sure that, that that it's reached every destination that it goes to. It needs to be scanned in. As somebody who used to work in, uh, you know, a warehouse of packaged goods and, and delivery service stuff, stuff needs to be scanned in so it knows where it was on its journey to its final destination. So it's an important thing to look over, but you're probably going to have to take a loss on some of this stuff right? If, if it doesn't show up and you want to keep a good like reputation with this customer, you're going to need to do a full refund, right? Because not only are you breaking TCG guidelines by not giving a full refund, but you are also, um, you know, you're, you're not helping, I guess, in a situation like that. And it sucks because obviously this is on USPS or whatever delivery service you use. But unfortunately, as the seller, we have to take full responsibility for everything that goes on the second, even the second it leaves our hand, right? Until it shows up at their door and they receive it, we have to take charge of that. And then if, if you feel like for some reason you're getting screwed over, right? And that you are not getting, there's, there's, you know, there's no way that it says it's delivered here in the tracking, so it had to have been delivered. There's no way it wouldn't have been delivered. That doesn't make any sense uh, for them to say it wasn't delivered like it should be there. Well, you just, unfortunately, 
you can open a case with TCG player if you really want to, right? If you really want to open a case with TCG player, you can do that. Um, honestly, if there is a ban option on TCG player, something I've never had to use, if there is a ban option on TCG player, I absolutely would suggest doing that instead. Give them the full refund of whatever it is that they got. Uh, hopefully they are a saint. And if they do get the package, they will return it back to you or give you some kind of update. Or if they do get the package, they'll, you know, you can give them your PayPal or something and they can send you that money through PayPal, ho however it needs to work. But just realize that there are going to be things like that that are going to happen. And it's going to be kind of rough to, um, kind of rough to deal with as far as those things go. But that's pretty much it for feedback. Um, you're like I said, the big deal about feedback is you're you're at the whim of the customer, right? The customer is always right in the situation. And unfortunately, sometimes that does lead a lot of sellers to get screwed over in a sense. Um, I see a lot of this happen with international shipping, uh, not saying that all places international are going to cause this problem. But international shipping, a lot of stuff tends to get lost. A lot of stuff there is is you know scam things set up to kind of buy like you know hundreds of dollars worth of product from you only for it to show up at their door and you say and them say it never showed up and then you just like you have to give them their money back and because they're saying it didn't show up and then they get a full refund let's just say they spent three hundred dollars on your store and then you send them the product and it shows that it was delivered to their address, but they continue to say they never got it and that they have no, they, they do not have the product at their home. Then you have to give them a full refund of $300. So then they get $300 and they get the, the cards, right? It's, it's not okay. Please, right? This is, this is where you get into the point. You, you, you can report that to authorities you can you can and that can happen not just international that can happen here domestic too it, it's happened before um just keep keep your eyes on stuff right and it's 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 hard to realize that you're essentially at the mercy of somebody else but most of your sales will go really great right most of your sales will go really great if you really have a high ticket item and you don't feel comfortable selling it on TCG player, don't, right? Go find a find a investor um somewhere in the 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 YouTube space or somewhere on uh, you know, somewhere online in a reputable source and sell it to them. Cuz that way you at least know you're getting what you're supposed to be. So that's uh that's kind of my advice for keeping feedback in a positive note. Um, again, feedback is is kind of a a hit or miss thing. Um, but most of your feedback should be good. Uh, sometimes you'll have to deal with this, and sometimes you're going to be real upset. And if that if if it happens so often to you to the point where you're you're seeing it on a regular basis, maybe turn off your inventory for your channel, right? take a little bit of a break and then get back onto it later on. Um, you know, once things have been settled a little bit more, cause you don't want to keep losing money. Right. Or maybe you take a lot of your items that you're selling and you bring them down to like a couple dollars, right? Uh, a couple dollars, right. Is so much easier to lose and you won't feel as bad about it as opposed to like $300, right? Losing $300 and the product that costs $300 is a huge hit but if you lose something like five dollars i mean like it's not the end of the world you know that's why that's why i make sure that anything that is twenty dollars or over i put tracking on and kind of deal with it as is but there's not i like to think there's not so many malicious people out there in the world but i think i'd be lying if that were the case so anyway before this gets too long Thank you all so much for watching. I do really appreciate your support. I hope you guys learned something from this guide in regards to how to properly handle negative feedback and how to kind of uh, make that stuff, uh, you know, 
and how to make that stuff fix itself, right? How, how you can fix negative feedback on your store. So if you have any questions about negative feedback or anything in regards to uh, any of that, right, make sure to leave a comment down below. I'd be more than happy to hear from you all, and uh, hopefully I can answer a lot of your questions. Uh, you can also, uh, you know, feel free to like and subscribe while you're down there too. I have plenty more of these videos I plan to make for everybody, so hopefully you guys enjoy them and I can get all the information you guys need from me in order to kind of push forward the safety net of working on TCG Player. So thank you guys so much for watching. I do really appreciate it. And remember, to make it a great day or not, the choice is up to you. And I will see you all in our next video. All right. Nerd out.